Hi guys, I just thought I'd put a video together to show you the difference between a good investment and a bad investment, okay? So a lot of people, what they do is they get a borrowing capacity and then when they got a borrowing capacity, they go and look for a property, right? So uh, this is the kind of property that someone would look for if they were going to look for an investment, right? So this is a property in Sydney, borrowing 870. So normally, you know, people get a borrowing capacity, they go out and look for a property that fits that particular um, price level, right? Um, in Sydney, a lot of apartments pe people choose as an investment model. Um, we don't do that, right? Never have, never will, okay? Because investments, townhouse and that are not investment models and we, we, we're not run by that system. But let me just explain to you why that is and how that is. So you need two components. You need capital growth and you need income, right, to grow the portfolio. So let's just have a look at this one, right? 870, two bedroom, one bathroom, 85 square meters, seems okay, right? Um, quite close to the city there, close to the airport, okay? Two bedroom with city views, okay? Pretty good, got a pool, got four gyms, pretty nice, hey, eh? right? Air conditioning, balcony, okay? People with no experience would sort of be attracted to this kind of thing and think that this is a good type of investment, okay? But let's have a look at this. I've picked this one in particular because I've actually got the real figures from it. So I've got the strata levies there at um, 1612, as you can see, and the rates at 371, and it's currently rented for 870. What I've done is I've actually put it through our system. So when it comes through our system, this is our company, right? So so when it comes through our property um, investment analysis, it's a two-bedroom near you apartment, uh, two-bedroom, two-bathroom, one-car space in Wallow Creek, 10 minutes from the city, right? So the pr purchase price was eight seventy. Your investor contributions, that's how much money you need to put in to be able to secure it, right, with bank finance at 80%, right? So you need to come up with $212,000 of your own cash, okay? And what I've done is I've actually um, um, put this out there um, and I've actually said it that that's your own cash. So you're not borrowing that amount. So if it was going to come from the investment property and you were going to withdraw that in equity, then of course the figures are going to be totally different, totally worse, but totally different. So let's just have a look here. You had to put in 212 of your own money from your own bank account, okay? You, you have an interest-only mortgage of eight of 6.5% and your net um, weekly rental is 853, right? This program is very, very good because what it does is it calculates everything. It calculates tax position, it, ta it calculates uh, management fees, council rates, strata fees, everything, the lot, everything. And, and it gives you what your net result is, right? After all expenses. So here, what it's done is it's actually put you in a negative position. So you can see here, that your before tax is you're losing five hundred and six dollars a week, and after tax you're losing three hundred. Okay, so from our point of view, we wouldn't touch this with a barge pole, right? We don't touch anything to do with that kind of thing. All the stuff that we do is positive cash flow. And you can see by this example here why units and apartments and townhouses are definitely not the go for us, right? So if you were to look at um, a model that we do, our model would be totally flipped where it's positive cash flow, where the property is actually paying you every week rather than you pay out every week. In this example, you have to come up with $500 a week on top of your mortgage to actually keep this property. So this is why um, we wouldn't go anywhere near this kind of property. And that's why you shouldn't as well. So let me show you what we would have done. Okay, completely same set of circumstances, borrowing capacity at $800,000, right? This is a project that was in our cash flow accumulator program. Now, this is the completed project here, okay? Um, it's just recently been done. Um, now, I'll show you the plans um, over here. So what we did is we split the house. So we, we got two income levels from this house. On this side here where the entrance is, you've got a three bed, two bath house, okay? Nice big family home. And on the other side over here, where the entrance goes in here, 
Um, this is a two bed, one, two, um, lounge dining, two bed, one bath. So in total, we have five bedrooms and three bathrooms, but we're actually getting two incomes. Now, if I have a look at this, when you have a look at the completed project as in figures, um, not only are we getting increased valuation at the end because we've got two incomes coming from the one property, but we've also got additional cash flow. And this is what our system is all about. See here, the your um, investor contributions on the last model were over $200,000. They were 212, I think. This particular one here, the purchase price was 790. The investor deposit was only 165. Okay. Now, come down here and have a look at the cash flow. So instead of being negative, because remember the other graph went under, it went negative, uh, $500 a week. Ours is positive. So we're bringing in $295 a week um, after all expenses, after mortgage, after management fees, council rates, everything, two weeks um, vacancy rates, um, the lot, it's bringing you in. Now, after tax, it goes up to $354. Here are some photos that I, I did for you. Um, you can see here how we split it. So this is the backyard, it's the same, same block. So this is the backyard. Um, this is the kitchen area here, um, brand new, very nice, very spacious. This is the living area, quite big, okay. Um, this was it prior to completion, so just before the landscaping was done, okay. Um, nice street frontage with that one. So see how the two properties are drastically different from themselves. One is an investment model built on equity and cash flow. The other one is a no-go investment model. No one would ever buy a unit in Sydney like that as an investment, nobody, right? This is a completely different scenario from being a property collector and a property investor. If you like that video, just click the link here and sign up to my free mini course.